Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Mike Gorman. I have the privilege of serving as the president of your Salem Community College, the affordable, quality, empowering, and personalized educational opportunity. We wanted to welcome everybody here this evening uh, for our Meet the Candidates Night. Uh, special thanks to Jennifer Jones, the executive director of the Chamber of Commerce for putting this together. Jennifer, just wave to the crowd, please. This evening, uh, I want to thank uh, Noah upstairs, Noah McFadden, who does all this for us, puts it together. Uh, he is live streaming this as well as recording it, so it will be available to others who wish to uh, partake. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce the chairman of our Government Relations and Economic Development Committee, Lou Joyce. Here's Lou. I didn't say anything about masks in my life. All right. Thank you, Dr. Gorman. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, as always, uh, this is an exciting night for us. Uh, it is hard to believe that a week from tomorrow will be our elections. Uh, maybe it's good to believe that a week from tomorrow will be our election. Uh, tonight we get a chance to hear from uh, the candidates for the offices from uh, Lieutenant Governor down to uh, County Commissioner. Um, and before we begin and get anything formal, I'd like for you to stand and we'll Salute their flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The format for the evening uh, will be that each candidate will have five minutes to self-introduce, to present their platforms, including why each is the best choice for that office, and each presentation will be timed. There is a very significantly large timer in the back, which will give you a chance to see just how you are going against the five minutes. Candidates should refrain from making negative or disparaging remarks about other candidates or other political parties or elected officials. So this is a presentation of ideas, um, and we have conducted it in this fashion in the past and been very successful. Um, for the different uh, offices, I will draw my basket there. I've got names that I'll draw random, randomly for the order of presentation. And I think that's what we need to begin. We are being live streamed, so those who are not here hopefully are watching from home. And this should be, I think it's being recorded, Noah, let me know that, uh, so it can be viewed again. Uh, and that, I think, will bring us uh, to the beginning. Candidates may remove their masks while they are talking. Uh, we do ask that we respect the mask rules of Salem Community College, our host. Um, the first candidate um, that we have had confirmed was Lieutenant, uh, for Lieutenant Governor, Diane Allen. Is Ms. Allen here? Okay, I don't see that. Um, if she does show up, we will allow uh, her time later. Uh, the next level of uh, elected office would be State Senate. So we have Edward R. Durr and Stephen Sweeney. If you can come to the stage. Mr. Durr, well then I don't have to draw for the order because you have, <laughs> you have the microphone. Senator, please. Thank you. First, I uh, would like to offer some condolences to, to Edward Durr. He lost his father recently. And hopefully we all can keep him in our, keep him in our prayers. You know, politics are politics doesn't mean you have to dislike people or hate people because of their party. Uh, the reason why I feel that I and my two assembly mates should have a chance to continue to serve is we've delivered. You know, the nuclear power plan here I think is a very, very important employment location. 
and it was going to close. It was actually under the threat of closure. And our concern is what would happen to the economy of this beautiful county if you lose some of the best jobs that it has. And we went to work, and we fought one hell of a battle, not once, but twice, and we've won where the nuclear, we passed legislation first to give it a process through the BPU. First time around, it won four to one with the BPU commissioner. Second time around, won five to zero. So you went from closure to keeping it open. And you know, these are good paying jobs for people in southern New Jersey, not just down here. Another, I think, huge success story, and we worked with all levels of government the wind port is coming to Salem County. We were fighting, and when I say fighting, we were fighting other parts of the state for this project. This is trans really a transformative project. You're talking about a few thousand jobs coming here. Some of the arguments we had when we started was, well, it's all the way in Salem County. You can't get any employment. You where are you going to get the workers from? It's like there's a nuclear plant. You know, hey guys, wake up. You got plenty of people working there. We'll have no problem getting people to come here and work here because they're good paying jobs. And not only are we going to assemble the, wind, the windmills, we're actually going to have manufacturing right now. A nacelle facility is going to be added. And the nacelle is the component of the turbine where, where the blades spin on. And from talking to the president of GE International in Trenton, he said to me, it's not just the nacelles, the blades are a football field long. And you know what happens? They're so long, they have to make them close by in order for us to have, again, so you're talking about nacelles, you're talking about blades, you're talking about other components in it. There's 200 acres of land of, of, of dredge spoils right next to where the port's going to be. I worked at that nuclear plant. I know that place inside and out. So we have the chance to really create, again, a lot of jobs, which this county needs. You know, Amazon's nice, or this one's nice, but good paying jobs is a lot better than minimum wage jobs. We'll take them all, but I would prefer the jobs that can sustain families. And just recently, I, work, I worked with the county commissioners, and we had a problem with EMS. I got a phone call. I got the state of New Jersey to deliver half a million dollars. Guess one or two phone calls and we kept EMS operational in Salem County because public safety is critically important. So I think we have a history of delivering the rail. Forget about that because it's been a while, but even replacing the rail coming into Salem County. Look, we're going to continue to work to find ways to get more people employment here. And I guess the last one is we got historic funding for our schools. It was one hell of a battle, but we finally won the fight to where the money follows the child. So where you have school districts that lost population, they're not keeping the money for kids they don't have. The money is going to the schools that actually have the children. And I know Pennsville has seen some dollars. And from being here for a while, I remember when they used to vote for school budgets. Pennsville's school budget, I think, went down 19 out of 20 times. If not, if, I think I'm pretty, pretty close to that number. Well, we've gotten them additional funding now. So they're actually getting funded for the children that they have. So. What I would say is, and unfinished business, we are going to continue to work uh, with Chamours. We think that the deep water site is an outstanding location for opportunities to develop and create more jobs, probably in you know, a logistics center, even possibly another port. So to me, I think we've delivered. I think we've demonstrated that uh, we work hard. We appreciate what the people of Salem County do. And we're asking for your vote. We don't take it for granted. And let our body of work be the judge. Thank you. All right. Thank you. The next, let me get, give some clarity here. All right. The next um, slate of candidates will be those people running for the state assembly. So I believe all four of you are here, so please come on up and take a chair. And I can then randomly draw your, the order of your presentation. So 
No. 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 All right. <clears throat> First to present will be Beth Ann McCarthy Patrick. Hello, everyone. So for most of you, some may or some may not know me, my name is Beth Ann McCarthy Patrick, and I'm a candidate for New Jersey Assembly Legislative District 3. <clears throat> I was born and raised in Pennsville, in Salem County, where I attended Pennsville Memorial High School. And then after high school, I decided to pursue a lifelong passion of helping people by pursuing a career in fire, as a firefighter EMT. I recently retired as a firefighter EMT after 27 years of service and a life member of Pennsville Fire and Rescue. As a firefighter and EMT, I understand the importance <clears throat> of lending a helping hand to those in need. I've made a career of helping people who are in their time of greatest need. I will bring my passion for helping people to the State House in Trenton by listening to the needs of every citizen of the 3rd District and working to assist them in any way. I'm a small business owner operating in the restaurant business. I'm a past member of the Salem County Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors, so I understand acutely the type of challenges that small businesses have faced as part of the restrictions imposed due to COVID. I understand the difficulty in running a business in New Jersey in general, definitely. I, work with the business, I would work with the business community to develop strategies for encouraging business growth, retention, and initiation to, being more, to bring more good paying jobs to the district. I'm a past Salem County Woman of Achievement Award winner. I currently serve on the Mannington School Board of Education. I currently live in Penn, excuse me, Mannington Township with my husband Luke and our two dogs, Emmett and Angus. I'm running to bring fresh ideas and a new approach to state government. I will focus on making sure that we finally stabilize taxes in New Jersey while promoting growth in the economy and securing additional job opportunities for the residents of the 3rd District. I will work to provide law enforcement the support they deserve while working to protect police and firefighter pensions. I'll focus on protecting our Second Amendment freedoms in New Jersey. New Jersey is one of the highest tax states in the country, and our residents simply cannot maintain that strain of crushing tax requirements in this state any longer. Resident after resident tell me that as soon as they can retire, they are moving south to more affordable states. Companies often leave <clears throat> to less taxed locations as well. This exodus needs to end which can only be achieved by stabilizing our taxes. For 20 years, the current administration has tried to accomplish that goal without any success, and it's time to try a new approach. Likewise, we need to focus on both stabilizing taxes and renewing unnecess reviewing unnecessary regulations that stifle the economy and creation of jobs. Supporting the, excuse me, the creation of jobs. Supporting the, the economy and creation of jobs will also help every resident will lead to further stabilization and eventual reduction. We must t make sure that we fully support those that protect us, our military, our veterans, police, and firefighters. Our police have been improperly vilified over the last few years. Talk of reducing their resources comes as many departments already lack sufficient resources. We need to support our police on both job and after they retire. Therefore, we must work to protect them. Finally, we must protect our Second Amendment freedoms. Every American has a right to self-protection under the Constitution, and for too long, New Jersey has improperly infringed on that right. I will work to reverse that. Nothing changes if changes are not made. The time for change is now, and I will support Jack Chodorelli's platform and will help him put New Jersey on the right track with fresh ideas and a new approach. 
Thank you for your attention today. I humbly ask for your vote for the New Jersey State Assembly, and thank you, Salem County Chamber of Commerce. Uh, next up would be Adam Telefero. Good evening, everybody. My name is Adam Talaferro. I'm honored and appreciative for this opportunity to join you all. I want to thank the Chamber for this opportunity to, to speak to you directly. Throughout my life, I've truly prided myself on hard work. Oh, sorry about that. Throughout my life, I've uh, prided myself on hard work. Working with the state legislative district team has been an opportunity of a lifetime. You know, in politics, as Steve said, politics sometimes becomes politics. But there's brought to my attention, there's a quote that one of my opponents said. It says, doing nothing comes natural to Adam Tyler Farrell. With that being said, I truly believe it's important to talk about some of the initiatives that we've been working on that may mean nothing to some, but I believe mean a whole heck of a lot to the residents here of Salem County. As many of you know, you heard Steve mention, the groundbreaking ceremony at the Winport. The Winport represents the largest economic investment in Salem County in decades. 1,500 jobs. It is something my colleagues envisioned for many, many years. We forward to see it happening here today. Truly excited to be a part of the team to keep it going. The Salem Hospital you heard about. The team has fought hard to make sure that that hospital stays open. I've been someone who's been fortunate to have had great access to medical care. And it's all of our platforms to make sure that all of our citizens here in Salem County continue to have that same access. Again, we heard our team talk about school funding. Our team has brought additional funding to this county you, talk, you think about the VOTAC, our school districts in Pennsville, Pennsgrove, Carneys Point, Salem City, Woodstown, and other districts have all incre have received increased funding in the millions of dollars. We fully funded the pension, $6.9 billion payment for the first time in over a quarter century. We dedicated $3.7 billion to reduce the state debt. For someone that's never been to Salem County, that may seem like nothing. For those of us that spend time here, that love this county, it means a whole hell of a lot. Finally, some of you may know over the summer, I had a brain hemorrhage. I was in the ICU for six days. I was in the hospital for a total of 34 days. I'm still in physical therapy as we speak. While in the hospital, I missed three voting sessions, two committee meetings. At the end of the voting sessions, for one session, we brought out hundreds of bills. I missed three. One of my opponents said, I chose not to vote. Having a brain hemorrhage is not a choice. I hope nobody in this room ever has to go through anything like that. But let me tell you, yes, I did miss those votes. But I want to tell you about a few other things that I missed while I was in the hospital. I missed working my job helping patients get access to the medications that they need each and every day. I miss my foundation board meetings, where we approved thousands of dollars in medical equipment for patients that couldn't afford it on their own. This equipment is to help them walk again, like myself. I miss that meeting. I miss hugging my kids. I was in the hospital for two months. Didn't get to see my kids. So yes. I miss those votes. You're absolutely right. But all I ask is when you say I miss votes, talk about all the other stuff that I just mentioned this evening that I missed. That time you can never get back. My health is something that I never take for granted. These jobs, these opportunities, this is not even a job. This is an honor and a privilege to be able to serve this district. And I would never voluntarily choose to miss a vote. You're hearing that from me directly. Words cannot express how honored I am to be a part of this third legislative district, serving with Steve and John. I've learned so much from them. I humbly ask for your support of Steve, John, and myself on November 2nd. We look forward to continuing to work hard for the residents of Salem County. Those folks who truly understand 
that what we do is more than nothing. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you to the Chamber for this opportunity. And our next speaker will be Beth Sawyer. Beth. <clears throat> Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Beth Sawyer, and I am running for assembly. And I want to point out the reason why I decided to stand up and really take a beating is for the people sitting in this audience. Salem County was the biggest drive to make me commit to run for this position. You may be asking yourself, why Salem County? I am a local real estate broker, and I have an office in Woolwich Township, New Jersey. I started selling houses down in Salem County, and I was so taken back by the real estate taxes here. I'm selling houses to people that their houses are $100,000, and their real estate taxes are $6,000. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my background. I grew up in northwestern Pennsylvania in a small town called Warren, Pennsylvania, surrounded by many towns that remind me of Salem County. I was raised by my father, who's a Marine, and my mother, who worked at Blair Corporation. I'm sure you remember when the polyester clothes came into the United States. You saw them in the Enquirer magazine. That was my mom. My dad worked for the local refinery company. He was part of the union. I watched them every day get up and work and struggle to raise four kids on minimum wage and had to work overtime to cover the bills. I was fortunate enough that I got to go to Penn State. And at Penn State, I studied political science, which taught me a lot. It's a good thing I studied it because I've needed some pretty thick skin during this election. And it's OK. The fight is worth it for me that I look out at all of you and say, I want to be your voice. I want to make a difference for you. Yes, we need jobs, 100%, but you need your taxes to be affordable. I go to work every day, I deal with seniors, I deal with veterans, I deal with first-time home buyers, I deal with second-time home buyers. Everybody's biggest complaint are the real estate taxes in this state. We are the number one highest real estate in New Jersey in the country. I'm sorry, that is not something that we should brag about. It's very disappointing. How can I make a difference? I'm going to go. I want to be your voice. We need balance. We need people. We need new vision. We've had the people in the positions forever. The one thing that's been consistent is they have raised your taxes every single year. It's got to stop. What's the definition of insanity? The same thing that happens over and over and over again. And that's your taxes. It's been a rough run. I've had a couple comments even tonight, but I want you to see my face. I want you to know what I really look like. I want you to know that you can come to me anytime you want when you have a concern. You're not just going to see me when it's election time. I have knocked on over 3,000 doors already for this election, and I was a write-in, so I got a late start. My phone number is public. I want you to know that I will always be available for you. And if I am proudly elected by you, I promise that my re-election will not be a smear campaign. I will be able to stand up here and run on my own merit and make you proud that I fought every step of the way to get your taxes lowered. That I fought for seniors, I fought for veterans, and I fought for first-time home buyers. My daughter's 27 years old. She works for me. My son is out in California. I have two beautiful children that I've raised on my own. So I am one of you. I know the struggle. I'm not a rich politician. I don't live in a million dollar house. I have to get up every day and fight to pay my bills. I want you guys to know that I'm going to be your voice that understands what it takes to stretch that paycheck out every day. It hurts me that I help more seniors move out of this state, that they can't watch their grandchildren grow up because they can't afford to live here. These people have worked 30 years to pay off their homes. When you retire, we all know you make less. You don't make more. And it's unfortunate that your taxes, you paid off your mortgage, hopefully, over the last 30 years, but your taxes have grown so much that it's made it impossible for you to stay here. The amount of people that are moving out of this state 
is a disgrace to the people that are in power. It is not something that we should be bragging about. Now, one thing I can say, I am willing to work with whoever wins. We need new vision. We need new direction. We need people that are willing to work with each other, not because they're special interests, because it's right for the people that are sitting right here in this audience. It's right for the residents of New Jersey. It's not because it pads your pocket and makes you a richer politician. It's because it makes a difference in the people who live here. I want to be that person that I can say, you're staying here. You're being a move-up buyer. You're going to watch your kids grow up. Your kids can afford to buy here. Every time they take somebody out, they have to get pre-qualified. And their biggest problem is the real estate taxes. So I humbly ask you, please vote for me on November 2nd for assembly. Let me be your voice. Thank you. Mr. Versicelli, you're up next. Thank you. There are advantages and there are disadvantages to being the last speaker from the legislative side. First of all, the Senate President, Steve, covered a great deal of what's taking place in real time. Adam followed up on it. You heard the story of the nuclear plant. The wind port is simply huge uh, and wasn't something that happened by accident. Uh, I had a personal hand working with the three of us with respect to Salem Hospital and that being the fact that it's open. We've got to remind people because we've been at this for a while and it's, you know, our attention span is short, it just happens that way, but uh, there was a good chance that hospital wasn't going to stay open. The foundation moved the money to a foundation in North Jersey. We moved swiftly collect uh, collectively from the state legislative standpoint passed legislation requiring that money to go back to that hospital if the hospital could make the case and became a community not-for-profit hospital, which it is now, and that hospital is open. It's a little things that count. Now, you know, this discussion that goes on about taxes, we all hate taxes. We all pay them. We all dislike them. We don't know what the number should be. Some people like the number to be zero. We, 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 you know, we'd like them to be lower. And that's why when you hear about more money to school districts, that goes to property taxes. Because the local property tax bill, when you get it, none of that money goes to the state of New Jersey. Not a dime goes north. On that bill, though, reflects what comes from the state house down, no matter what the administration. That's school aid, that's municipal aid, that's infrastructure aid. For the county side, it's street and highways. All that adds up. And if that's not there, then that tax bill is even going to be larger. Now, that's just an unfortunate reality. New Jersey, over the years since World War II, has developed an over-reliance on property taxes. There are different ideas how to fix it. And there are ways to change it. The big problem we have in changing it is New Jersey people are very big on reform. They just don't want change. Because the change that has to be made to fix that to a point that, like, school taxes wouldn't go into the property tax bill, nobody likes that option because they don't want change. We can offer suggestions, but we can't force it. Let me tell you a few things that I think are very important. Because Beth made a point that's very real about seniors staying in their home. We want them to stay in their home. But by the way, I might add, People have been moving from New Jersey to retire for a very long time. Maybe now more than numbers than we like to see, but New Jersey's population is up, not down. But for seniors, we took an extraordinary step a couple of years ago and said, your retirement income, up to $100,000, is no longer subject to New Jersey's income tax. That matches Pennsylvania and it's sent it to stay. This year we went a step further and we said, we can't have that clip of $100,000. So now we allow people with retirement income of up to $150,000 to have some of that between $100,000 and $150,000 not, not reach the New Jersey requirement to pay income taxes in a full amount. That's a big deal. We also increased the property homestead rebate for seniors. A lot of households got an extra $500 in the mail because of the millionaire's tax and, and how that was negotiated. I personally would have wanted to go right on the tax bill, but it was decided people would use it in the way that they felt most helpful to their house. We want people, we want seniors to stay in their home. That's why when Steve and I arrived in the legislature, Adam wasn't with us at the time, the threshold to freeze your property taxes was only $15,000. Now it's approaching $90,000. So as a senior, these are programs that will help you and help you stay in your home. And Salem County is a very unique place. I'll give you an idea of how important it is for teamwork. Lee Ware calls and says that Ron's having problems at Salem Boat Sale with the curve. Every once in a while somebody's not making a curve, they're driving into a store through the side window. Not a good thing, by the way, especially if you're standing at the counter. We collectively moved, brought down to the commissioner, uh, uh, the Department of Transportation commissioner, Senate President was there, Adam was on the phone, and that curve has been repaired to a point that we think it's safe. We have a little more work to do. Another small thing that only Salem County people can understand, 
you might remember a few, uh, several months ago, there were, there were signs scattered through Salem County, save the cabins, save the cabins. Does anybody remember that? Well, by the way, cabins are still there. These are the kind of things that when you represent a district, you know what's important to the people you represent. These would not be considered a major thing to somebody living in Newark. They were important to our people, and we reacted accordingly. I like to think we've been responsive. I like to think through these years we've grown to know one another, and I'll close on this note. Our office has the highest and highest rated constituent services there are. During the height of the pandemic, when you couldn't get someone on the phone at the state level, there was someone answering the phone in our office. And where we could, we helped. Our people deserve combat pay for trying to sort through unemployment issues, motor vehicle issues, all the things associated with the pandemic. We were there when you needed us because that's our job. And if you send us back, if you trust us again to carry, to carry the voice of Salem County to the State House, we will not let up because the next big front, we've got to get the Camores location back in good economic service to this county. We have to figure out what to do with that. We will bring the state apparatus and every resource we have to bear as soon as the county decides what they'd like to do with it. My friends, it's been an honor and a privilege to be with you, to know you, and to be by your side. I promise all of you, we will be even stronger as the next two years are in front of us. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. You may step down and return to the audience. Okay, uh, next would be S Sheriff Miller, but uh, Diane Allen has arrived, and we would uh, like to put her in to the order and allow that, uh, that position to have uh, its moments. So, Diane Allen. Well, I'm very thankful to be here in Salem County. Um, glad that a number of you have come out tonight. It's such an important thing. We have early voting right now. Hope that you're taking advantage of it. November 2nd, of course, is the election. I will tell you that I did not uh, expect to be running a campaign right now. You might know me from television. I anchored the news in Philadelphia for 25 some years. And then I was in the State Senate for 22. When I retired, I really thought that was it. Happy to look towards retirement. But some of the things that went on in this state really worried me. And particularly during the pandemic as things fell apart and it really became clear that New Jersey was broken, not just because of the pandemic, but because of things that were being done around it. I finally listened to Jack Cittarelli and said, yes, <laughs> I will run. And I'm doing it because we need to fix New Jersey. I tried to get something done with motor vehicles. You may have done that. You just heard that even senators and assemblymen couldn't get through to the state on these things. And it's true. Nobody could. And it wasn't just that, but it was also trying to get through to the Department of Labor for unemployment checks. I tried to help somebody do that for the longest time. Couldn't get through. We find out from a University of Chicago study that New Jersey's 50 out of 50 when it comes to the chance of being able to find somebody on a phone who will pick up the phone in state government. We're 50th out of 50. We're also 50th out of 50 when it comes to a business environment. All the big businesses are leaving. Mercedes just left. Do you know they don't make Oreos here anymore? This is where they made Oreos, in New Jersey. Not anymore. They moved. But we're number one in taxes. So we do have a number one thing. But that's the problem. We've seen taxes go up considerably over the last four years. 
I believe that you've probably seen the quote, if taxes are your issue, this is probably not your state. That was what Phil Murphy said, and taxes are my issue, but this is my state, and it's your state. We need to get, get taxes down, and that's one of the things that Jack and I are absolutely going to do. Reduce taxes, and we're gonna do it by cutting the size of government. I mean, there are an awful lot of folks who could have been answering phones, but they weren't. And soon there'll be some of them that won't be able to because they will no longer work for the state of New Jersey. We need to cut government. We also need to make sure that we redo the funding formula for schools. You look at school funding, it's so unfair right now. Jack and I want to see things done fairly across the state. I looked it up and in uh, 2019, Penns Grove, Carney's Point, you got about $21,000 a year per student. In Asbury Park, they get $43,600 per student, more than double. Are their kids worth twice as much as yours? I don't think so. That's not the way government should work. It shouldn't be determined by your zip code. It should be determined in a fair and equitable manner. And we're gonna redo the way money is put out for education. <clears throat> We're also gonna stand with police. We feel that there have been some things done that are so unfair to our good men and women in blue. I mean, look, there are a few bad ones. They need to be ostracized, jailed, whatever. But the vast, vast majority are good folks. And uh, well, there's a law now that says that they can't go up to your 17-year-old who's sitting around drinking, smoking weed on the street. There's nothing they can do, and they can't tell you about it. We want to empower parents. We want to make sure that parents have a say as to what goes on with their children in that area, when it comes to schools, where they're going to go to school, what they're going to be taught. Parents should have the input. The Things are being taught that are inappropriate at this point. I also stand with uh, the police on, on other things, but I'm running out of time, so I'm just simply going to tell you that Jack and I understand that there are problems in New Jersey, but we love this state, and we want to make it a state that all of us can live in and be proud of again. And to do that, we're going to try to make it more equitable, more fair, and we're going to listen to what you have to say so that we know what you think should be, doing, should be done in New Jersey, because that's what we want to do. Thank you very much. All right, get back on schedule here. Uh, the Office of Salem County Sheriff. We have our candidate, Sheriff Chuck Miller. Chuck, it's all yours. Thank you. Good evening. A special thanks to uh, Jennifer, the Board of uh, Trustees there. Mike Gorman and the college for hosting this uh, event here this evening. I'd also like to thank you, the residents, for attending and those that you are on social media watching this evening, taking time out of your busy schedule to join us here this evening so you too can make informed choices in November on what candidates you so choose. Events such as this are truly what the fabric of our country is made of, and I thank you all for caring. As I complete my fourth term, as your Salem County Sheriff, and soon to be prepared for my fifth with your support and help in November. I'd like to personally thank the residents for your support and also the men and women that I serve with at the Salem County Sheriff's Office. I have a couple individuals here that I'd like to recognize that are here with me this evening. Under Sheriff John Gazupi, the warden at the county jail. John, thank you. And Under Sheriff A.J. Cummings, who's in charge of the 911 center as well as the law enforcement division at the sheriff's office. And our confidential secretary there, Diana Hedman, who's, thank you. Thank you guys for what you do for us and the residents of Salem County. 
and more importantly, thank you for what you do for me. I'm presently serving 42 years in law enforcement this month, and I can tell you that I'm just as excited about today in law enforcement as I was 42 years ago when I was a young patrolman in the city of Salem. When I was first elected in 2007, I wanted to make sure that the Salem County Sheriff's Office was a premier law enforcement agency that was recognized in the county. And I believe since 07, we've collectively been able to do that, and I thank you guys for your endeavors in doing such. I was one of the only few sheriffs in the state at that particular time to realize the importance of what then was called CALEA, or now it's New Jersey Cops. It's an accreditation program that law enforcement agencies operate under, which ensures that the office enacts and complies with over 105 best practices of enforcement policies. Our office recently received the renewal for such accreditation and will soon be uh, picking that accreditation plaque up on the 5th of uh, November. I've consolidated responsibilities with the four divisions under my authority. The Law Enforcement Division, the Corrections Division, the Office of Emergency Management, and our communications to provide quality services for the residents here in Salem County. And I've expanded the role of the Salem County Sheriff's Office on a number of programs, and I'll just mention a few. Our triad, which a lot of you are members of, enables seniors to get together quarterly to be able to exchange hellos and also to be informed about the new topics that are affecting them. We have a DARE program that I'm extremely proud of. We're the only law enforcement agency in Salem County to be operating such. We're now teaching in over 10 elementary schools about drug awareness. Project Lifesaver, which some of you may be part of. Also, our joint opiate awareness partnership with the prosecutor's office, just to name a few. And our Sheriff's Labor Program. With our present uh, pandemic, we've uh, invested over 325,000 manpower hours along with 75,000 tons of trash collected, donated back to the residents through inmate labor. And one of my proudest responsibilities working hand-to-hand, -hand, I believe he's still here, is with Joe Hannigan. Joe, thank you for what you do for the veterans of Salem County. The partnership that we have at the Veterans Cemetery cannot be repeated. And I want to thank the many organizations that you get out there, as well as the individual residents, in supporting that. Thank you again for what you do. We've continued to maintain approximately 40 to 48% of offsetting costs at the correctional facility by the use of continuing revenue by housing both federal and state inmates, and federal inmates as well as other county inmates. And we've recently signed a $53 million contract with Gloucester County for housing their inmates. As your sheriff, my strategy is simple, to continue to provide our community the services that I've been doing since elected, not, during, not just during an election year. It's not about politics for me. It's about serving you and those that I represent. As a lifelong resident of Salem County, I've thrived to assist the residents of Salem County in many ways in providing the best possible services to the communities, both personally and professionally. And I'm looking forward to continuing this path that I've ex successfully demonstrated in providing the safety, <coughs> excuse me, and security to the residents of Salem County that I hold dear to my heart here, that I call home, Salem County. I want to thank you again for attending this evening and I look for your support in November. Thank you. All right, that brings us to our final slate of candidates for Salem County Commissioner. So if the candidates for commissioner could take their seats, and I'll draw the order of presentation. Okay, if we're ready. And the first presenter will be Catherine Bobbitt. Okay. Good evening.
evening. I'd like to take this opportunity first to thank the Chamber of Commerce and the Salem Community College for hosting the event this evening. I appreciate that we as candidates have a formal opportunity to introduce ourselves to the business community and also to the residents of Salem County. So first I'll give a little bit about my background. I'm a lifelong resident of Salem County. I grew up between Pennsville and LAC. Um, I'm a product of the public school system here and I graduated from Pennsville Memorial High School. I received a Bachelor of Arts from Rosemont College in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania um, in political science and philosophy. And while a student at Rosemont, I won a US government sponsored scholarship to study abroad and learn Turkish language, which was deemed as an, a language critical to national security in Istanbul, Turkey. I then continued my education in Turkey. I got a Master's of Arts in Turkish Studies and a Master of Business um, Administration with a specialization in Global Affairs. And then I continued working in Turkey for a while. I was a um, resident director with American University students abroad for eight week programs with a critical language scholarship in Baku and where students were learning Turkish. And I handled all aspects of the programs from helping students through culture shock, liaising with host families, handling and translating through student medical issues and emergencies, and creating and implementing student programs. Um, and I also taught English for a couple of years as well, both at the primary and secondary school levels. Um, and this overseas experience provided me with invaluable lessons, the strength to find and use my voice, extensive skills in problem solving, because boy, were there many, and compassion, empathy, and understanding for all cultures and all people. Um, and then I moved back to the US. So here we are. I um, now work as a, a subcontracts administrator with Jacobs Engineering Group in the Life Sciences Division, where I manage subcontracts on very large project um, to the tune of $600 million. This entails handling the contract through its entire life cycle, from the pre-award process through award, um, change management, invoicing, and contract closeout. So that's a little bit about myself. But why am I running to be Salem County Commissioner? Why do I think I would be a good candidate? Well, it's simple, I wanna help people. I want a transparent government that works for and serves all residents equally. A county government that listens to the voters. If elected, my first act will be to introduce a salary cut to restore the salaries to the 2017 level that voters overwhelmingly approved in 2016. This will be the first step to responsible um, spending of taxpayer dollars. I will also focus on economic development. Geographically, Salem County is an amazing place with great potential with access to I-95 and the Delaware River. We have an amazing opportunity with the new Windport project thanks to our third legislative district representatives. We're committed to working with the state and other leaders on this project and to help prepare our labor force so that they have the education and skills required for the specialized labor that will be needed. This means collaborating with our educational institutions. Um, like the VOTEC and the community college. We need to build up and support our local education providers so that they can implement programs that cater to the needs of our community and incoming industries. This could easily be done by setting aside some of the $12.1 million in funds that the Salem County received from the American Rescue Plan Act of, of 2021. We need to work on continuing su to support our local small businesses as they are the engines of our community, but we also need to attract more business to our beautiful corner of South Jersey, and we need to do this responsibly. Perhaps this means allocating some funds to have a full-time staff member that focuses only on economic development. We could also find a way to repurpose the DuPont site and control the expansion of the warehouses. In addition to economic development, we need to support our local farmers, because that's you know what Salem County is known for, the garden spot of the garden state. They're the producers of our food. We're lucky to be so close to our food production. I know I appreciate all of the efforts of our local farmers, which is apparent in the wonderful produce that we receive in our weekly CSA farm share throughout the year. We also need to support our veterans and the efforts of folks like Joe Hannigan, who ensure that our veterans who are willing to make the ultimate sacrifice have all the services that they need. We need to continue honoring and respecting all who serve and served in the past. Lastly, of course, Situations change, and the needs of our residents will change over time. Therefore, we need to keep an open mind and stay connected with our residents so that we can listen to the needs of the community, advocate for those residents, and then provide the assistance and res respond accordingly. I don't claim to have all the answers, but I certainly have a lot of experience doing research and asking questions. And I will work to find the answers and problem solve to the best of my ability. I sincerely appreciate the opportunity granted to me to speak with you this evening, and if you have any additional questions or concerns, I welcome the chance to speak with you later. Thank you.
Next up will be Mickey Ostrom. Good evening, fellow Salem Countyans. Thank you to Mike Gorman, the college, and Jennifer Jones for organizing this event tonight, and especially to Jennifer for all the other chamber events, so you can actually hear me, that she organizes. Uh, my name's Mickey Ostrom. Uh, I've lived here all my life, and it's hard to believe, though, that it's been three years since I stood here before you and asked for the privilege to serve as your chosen freeholder. What tumultuous years those have been. Who knew we were soon to suffer a pandemic with all the social, economic, and personal havoc it has wreaked. We are no longer freeholders, but commissioners. And through it all, your bipartisan board has drawn on its members unique leadership skills and expertise to guide the county through the many challenges we faced. When working with my colleagues, the pronoun used is almost always we rather than I, and we serve all, not just some, of our residents. Ben, Laurie, and I have kept our campaign positively focused by emphasizing the many successes your board has achieved. I won't be redundant and restate what Ben will discuss about the railroad, airport, windport, and other developing projects. I will emphasize that your commissioners have accomplished our progress with no increase in the county tax rate this, for next year. I'd like to start by reviewing the accomplishments of our health department, because that's really been overwhelming during this pandemic. Our new, newly appointed director, June Cyber, has done a wonderful job. Our initial allotment of COVID vaccine doses was zero, Probably, possibly a response to your board's letter to Governor Murphy requesting Salem County be recognized for the unique place it is in enacting COVID restrictions. By pushing back against Trenton, we were able to get the needed vaccine and June set up a program that has run like a well-oiled machine delivering these doses to our neighbors and relatives. Your board was also able to fund much needed refurbishing of the Votech, providing a new roof on a large portion of the building and adding a new gym floor. Again, this was accomplished with no increase in the Salem County tax rate next year. Speaking of the Votech and Salem Community College, uh, there's Dr. Gorman, we are committed to working in partnership with both to make sure that the current job training needs of Salem County are met, especially as new skills are needed to serve the businesses coming into the county. Superintendent Jack Swain and President Mike Gorman have been invaluable assets to the county, and the future of the education in the county is bright with commissioners continued partnership with them. On the public works and economic development side, efforts have focused on strengthening the organization. Charlie Hassler has been appointed, appointed interim coordinator and plans are underway to structure a full-time presence. We have worked to obtain funds from Trenton for much needed infrastructure improvement. Job opportunities for our county residents have grown per, perhaps most visibly with the completion of the Amazon project in Kearney's Point. We are actively working with our municipalities to realize the benefits of, the, of available Recovery Act funding. Responsible growth is key. We listened to our residents when an unpopular recycling facility was proposed in, Piles, in Pittsgrove, and that proposal has been withdrawn. Salem County has been and will continue to be the leader in farmland preservation. I want to touch on the courthouse expansion about to begin. Make no mistake, this is a mandate from Trenton, and it has been looming for many years. But with the hard work of your commissioners, we have been able to cut the initial 80 plus million dollar price tag by over half, again with no increase in the county tax rate next year. We are committed to continuing our progress in a manner that is fis fiscally measured and within our means. We are committed to supporting those endeavors which are important to Salem County while not falling into the type of excessive spending common in the past. With that commitment and a hopeful 
continued expansion of the county tax base, tax stabilization will be achieved after many years of hard work. Ben Laurie and I have worked tirelessly with our fellow commissioners to deliver the service you deserve. Looking back to Lincoln's re-election theme, don't change horses in the middle of the stream. We have delivered commitment, honesty, and responsibility, and humbly ask that you give us the opportunity to continue serving all of you as proud Salem County Commissioners. Thank you, sorry for running over. I'm not sure if it was intentional, but when you mentioned Havoc, you looked directly at me. Well, I was wondering if I was going to get a, a barrier penalty like at the rodeo because I went over for a second. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll tally that up later. Uh, ben Lari, you are next at the podium. Good evening. Thank you, Dr. Gorman and the college. Thank you, Jennifer, for the chamber putting us on. Uh, thank you for my colleagues that have helped me out a little bit with what I'm going to talk about tonight, but I'm going to go a little off script, so you're going to be a little bit uh, challenged tonight. Um, I've had some, and if you've seen them, possibly having some negative mailings. Um, it happens, and I want to let you know we, we manage an $80 million budget. The freeholders take home, I take home just over $300 a week to manage an $80 million budget. Um, Yes, you cut our pay. We take a cost of living every year, 2%. That has been put out as we took it all back. Yeah, we took, oh, by the way, I am the highest paid freeholder or commissioner now. I get $20 extra more a week to be the director. And for being the director, I get to go to most of the meetings. I get to attend a lot of meetings. I get to drive all over the county. I get to drive all over the state. And yes, I do drive my own personal car. I do not use a county car, and yes, I do put in for mileage. So all those things being said, if you want to hold those things against me for making a little bit over $300, same thing with Mickey, I'm a medical doctor, a professional, two, two retired school teachers, and a, a businessman. Um, you know, you can hold this pay, you can hold it up there and make things out of it, you can put it in print, and you can tell half truths, but the truth is we make a little over $300 a week. Uh, and we do it proudly, and we do it because we have to serve. We ser I've served since I was a Boy Scout uh, back in the day. I was a um, school board, one of the toughest jobs, 10 years on a school board, took no pay, was a committeeman for seven years, and now I've been a freeholder for nine years, uh, commissioner, excuse me, uh, and I am blessed. Um, they talked about farmland. We have in our town, in our county, 15,000 acres preserved. Coming down to two, we have 24 additional 24 additional 100 acres coming up. We have the 400 jobs we just got with Amazon. We've got the 1,500, job, 1500, jo 1500 jobs coming with the Windport. If this is a generational opportunity that along with the nuclear plant can make us the clean energy capital of not only the Northeast but possibly the entire country. Who's going to manage the county? That's something I would be proud to do with the fellow free holders that I have on the board now the roads, the bridges, the traffic, the housing, the infrastructure, we, we need to be there. Yes, we have tremendous LD3 that have come through for us to get this. Um, we're going to keep, now we're going to manage it, and that's our job. Um, we have the, the railroad now that, that's going to be bringing um, tourism into our county. It's going to bring freight into our county. Uh, we've got Easter trains coming, we've got Christmas trains coming, we've got wine trains coming, and we're going to be having the rail bikes come. If maybe you've seen them in Salem County or down in Cape May County, um, we've talked about the airport. I'm going to skip some of these things because they did go off script. Um, Co Commissioner Board has been working diligently over the past decade to stabilize property taxes. This has not been an easy goal. We've had to deal with the unsustainable spending of the past and the collapsing of our base. The hard work of the current Commissioner Board has resulted in Salem County having the third lowest average property tax out of 21 New Jersey counties, and less than half the state average. The commissioners have also announced there will be no county tax rate increase next year. And this is very important. I need to recognize my running mate, Dr. Mickey Ostrom. Quoting scripture, and this is where it fits, in Esther 414, if you know the story of Esther, but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. 
Salem County has been blessed to have Dr. M Mickey Ostrom as a commissioner when the medical world turned around us has been in chaos. He is a great commissioner with a medical degree and over 30 years of experience. His leadership in guiding us through COVID crisis has been simply a godsend. Thank you, Mickey. We are better and a healthier Canada because you are commissioner. We have a great bipartisan team that works together for the betterment of Salem County and its residents and avoids the petty political squabbles of other levels of government. This commissioner board works together and shares responsibilities. We are doing more for Salem County because of our great team. We want to thank our management team and all the employees of Salem County. Finally, we fight for our residents of Salem County. When the state tried to leave us out of the initial COVID funding disbursement, we fought in a bipartisan manner and got the fair share of the funding. When Salem County Department of Health was given zero vaccines to distribute, we fought once again Trenton and got our fair share. I have many blessings in my life, the saving grace of my Savior Jesus Christ. My wife Kathy for 43 years, my children, Brittany and TJ, their spouses, Dan and Sarah, seven amazing grandchildren and my ability to serve Salem County as a commissioner. I am humbly asking that if you agree with our results and vision and what I can continue, that you vote for Dr. Ms. Ostrom and me in this election. God bless Salem County and God bless America. Nelson Carney. First and foremost, I want to thank God for giving me the honor to serve Salem County. Um, and Jennifer Jones and Dr. Gordon for uh, allowing us to speak tonight. For those who, who don't know me, my name is Nelson Carney Jr. I'm a lifelong resident of Salem County. Uh, I was raised in the great city of Salem, where both of my parents still reside to this day. Uh, I am presently married to Stacy Shorter Carney of Woodstown of 26 years. Between the two of us, we have seven children and nine grandchildren. I worked for Manning Mills for 22 years until retirement. At this present time, I'm working for Salem County Public Works. I'm also a member of Mount Zion Baptist Church. My public service includes serving as Woodstown Public Grove School Board President and also Salem County NAACP President. I also serve on the New Jersey State Conference NAACP. I serve on the Executive Committee for um, the Economic Development for the Salem County and I also serve on the Board of Directors for Stand Up for Salem. I'm also Chief Steward for Salem County, uh, CWA 1085. I'm running for Salem County Commissioner because I want to make a difference here in Salem County. Uh, we've been static on a lot of things throughout the years, especially in the areas of like Salem, Pinsgrove. Our commissioners seem to forget those areas are part of Salem County. I believe all people should be represented fairly and equally, who, especially our seniors sometimes, who we forget. I, I believe we also need to protect our farmers and preserve their farmland. We need to support the veterans as they supported our county and our country. Uh, we should have housing for veterans um, and get transportation for them so that they need to go to the VA hospital. Economic development areas we need to develop our assets in such as the DuPont site and the old Anchor Glass building in Salem. The wind port coming to the county is a, is a great asset to the county. We need to get folks trained to these jobs to be carpenters, electricians, and uh, mechanics and laborers. Uh, I know there's some progress being made for Salem Community College to get people training for these skilled jobs. So we, we have to notify these folks to let them know they are able to get these good paying jobs. Because there's nothing like having a good paying skilled job uh, and buying a home in Salem County and raising your family. We need transparency in government. And, and that would be, would, would provide us good working relationship. 
as I've been president through NAACP through the years, I've had good working relationship with the police department, the commissioners, uh, just about everyone in the county, the colleges, the schools, um, our county superintendent. I've had a good working relationship with everyone, and I want, want to continue doing that, being your commissioner. Cat, Bob, and myself would like to re refresh our commissioner board. Um, I'm not old, I'm not young, but we would like to serve Salem County with the fresh new ideas that we've talked to, the folks that we've talked to since we've campaigned, and um, bring those ideas to light. Again, I thank Salem Community College for having us, and I'm looking forward for everyone to support me and Cat Bobbitt come election day. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you, candidates. You may return to the audience. That brings us to the conclusion of, I guess it's our program, uh, to meet the candidates. Uh, again, thank you to Dr. Gorman and, and the trustees of the college for allowing us to uh, use, uh, utilize these great facilities. And thank you to those who are currently serving as elected officials and to those of you who have put yourself forward as candidates for elected office. Uh, it is a commitment. It's a commitment that we appreciate um, and tonight, we appreciate your civility and your uh, in in intellect in bringing your ideas to us to consider. So with that, um, and thank you, Jennifer, for putting this together every year. You know, we, we rely on Jennifer for more than, than even she thinks she can produce, but Every time we ask for something, it's, it's there. So the Chamber of Commerce is very well served, and we are serving you. So thank you for coming out tonight. This is very good. Uh, appreciate your attendance and appreciate your attention. And have a good evening now. Thank you.